It's time for the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. So I got to tell you, I'm still stuck on this meta thing. Um, I'm still stuck on the, how, just how bizarre and creepy that video was. I don't think he blinked much either. I mean, it's one of those weird kind of, is that, is that real or is that Memorex? Is that, is that some kind of weird AI? Um, Cause even the people walking by were, were creepy. Uh, but the message was worse. I mean, I got this, this eerie feeling of now we're going to take over the world. Meta, meta unit, metaverse. Where the, where we control everything. Scary, scary, crazy times. Anyway, here to share some thoughts on, on well, will this solve Facebook's crisis? Uh, and also to discuss his conversation or confrontation with Madison Cawthorn. I've asked Jack Cucciarella to come talk with us. Jack Jack is the digital guru over at Retire Marco and Remove Ron. He's also the co-host of the Zoomed In podcast. Jack, thanks for taking time for us. Thank you for having me on again. It's always a pleasure. It's always a privilege. Glad to be back and glad to have a have a lot to talk about. Well, maybe not super glad to be talking about Facebook again. Uh, <laughs> never a fun topic, but it's always it's always fun to to make fun of Mark Zuckerberg a little bit because you know if he's going to be attacking our democracy, we can poke fun at the fact that he doesn't blink or that he he just operates with this blank stare of I'm a robot. I'm here to take over the world. So, but but glad to be back on. No, and and look, you know, we we've over the last couple of days we've found out that what we already knew that most of the crazy organizing that went on on the extreme right, most of the, 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 the organizing that went into the January 6th insurrection uh, was because of Facebook and their algorithm of pushing hatred and, and the, worst, the, the worst possible content to keep you addicted to the, to the hate. Uh, it's the Orwellian two minutes hate right there on Facebook all day long. Mm -hmm. It's what their platform is. It's what they feed. It's what they make money off of. They can sell it, they can advertise it, and so they do. Uh, did you see the study that came out? It was, I think it was an internal one done that they created the profile of, a, I think it was a, a, just a conservative-leaning mom. And it, within two days, she had joined QAnon. Yep. Just because of how Facebook pushes you around. Like, that is, that is their goal. It is to push you to radical levels, to spend more time, to give them more attention. Uh, they're, they're, like a, they're like a child. It's like, give me more attention. I feed off of it. I will push in whatever direction I need to go. Um, it, it's kind of like the Republican Party. It's like it's almost like these things are connected in the way they work. So yeah, the hate machine. A bit. The hate machine works. And look, that goes into the uh, what we found out about you know how they weigh likes versus angry emoji face. Uh, angry, angry emoji face evidently is worth five likes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it's true. It's what they feed off of. It's the rage machine. Um, and so if they can do more of that, that's what they will. Uh, and if it's at the expense of us, they don't really seem to mind uh, because they are trying to take over uh, and nothing's really going to stop them if, yeah. if they have to. Yeah, and it's, it's not really about the country because he I think he has global, obviously global ambitions, says he's the they're the most used product in the history of civilization. Uh, and look, you know, he, he's all about bringing people together, even if it means mm. they're coming together to overthrow our democracy. And do you remember in, in was it 2016, there was some talk. I don't even. I don't even know who was generating it, but like, oh, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, a couple of years down the road, maybe a run for president. Is this someone that we want as a lead? And like now we're like, whoa, how about we slow that down? We see this guy wants to be controlled. Let's, let's not like, you know, he's touching democracy enough. Let's keep him away from any sort of like, power besides the one that he's trying to cultivate on his own. With, you know, his sort of drug like Facebook addiction that he's trying to get people sucked into, you know. You got social media companies, you got internet companies, and you got drug dealers. Those are people who describe uh, the people who consume what they have. They're, those are users, right? Mark Zuckerberg wants users. He wants people to get sucked in so he can use them. And and he, well, I, you got on a certain level, give them some credit because uh, they have changed what had been once somewhat lucid, rational, somewhat thoughtful people into rabid, uh, rabid haters. Yeah. And uh, I think that's been the goal. Uh, I guess you got to give them props for it because they've been successful in undermining democracy at every corner. Um, hopefully there can be a stop put to that soon. Hopefully we can come together and understand uh, having a monopoly in information and, and shared experience online is something that is bad. 
Um, I think hopefully we can get a little a little help from the Republican Party on that, maybe coming together in some bipartisan way. If we can get them to work on something, I don't I don't know if they will. I don't know if they are willing to come to the table on that. But I think it's a good argument to be made that if, if we're going to if we're going to act on something, it's pre- uh, presenting uh, preventing a monopoly in information. Um, I, I think that would be a reason to come together for once. For maybe one time, just yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah, we, we haven't seen them do much on Monopoly, and I would argue we're in in the Monopoly stage of capitalism right now already, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, you go down the line: agriculture, manufacturing, information, all all a ha- you know media, all a handful of companies controlling everything we see, hear, read, consume. Not a not a good time. No, no, not at all. Um, and and I think that if we can start with Facebook, we can start with this huge, you know, just like yeah, huge, huge, huge monopoly that they're trying to amass. And if we can start there, maybe we can see that breaking those up in other places will be potentially beneficial to society as it operates. If, if these top levels of, of, of companies and people aren't controlling everything from the bottom down, yeah. if we can see the effect that it has on our mental health and our democratic institutions just on Facebook, we can see how it will affect us elsewhere in terms of in terms of, you know, affecting workers in different industries. I mean, ultimately, though, doesn't that come back to us, though? I mean, uh, I'll be honest. I haven't had Facebook notifications on or any social media notifications on in forever. Uh, I consume what it is that I'm seeking. Anything they push at me, I automatically dis- disregard. It's, you know, I, I don't even look at half of the things that are on my feed. Uh, I, I, I seek out certain things, but, you know, I, I don't fall in that rabbit hole. I don't allow myself. Yeah, it, you know, you can say that there, if there's a bigger movement to delete Facebook and for people to move off the platform, that could be beneficial. They have billions of users. There's billions of users on Instagram, uh, the, the messaging app that they have, just different platforms that they, they own. And, and it's difficult to say that the way we have to beat this company is to change our lives entirely from what they were. When they, as a, as a you know, manager of their product, had the ability to change it for the better, to, to fix it in a way that's not going to be detrimental to the mental health of young people, that won't undermine democratic institutions, if they can put a stop to push, uh, pushing myths and disinformation, those are the steps that they need to take. It's, it's difficult to put it on, on us, the consumer, who just, you know, on the, this micro level interacts with them, when the big issues are coming from these systemic problems that exist within the organization that they can put a stop to and that they understand how to stop or how to slow down. Uh, since you brought this up, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the fact that what comes out of this, um, you know, we now have, you know, people like Lauren Boebert and, uh, and you know, Marjorie Trader Green and, and <laughs> Madison Cawthorn. We get these, these nothing people uh, with horrible ideas in positions of power uh, and have, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who hang on their words and they're, they're basically lunatics. And you had an opportunity to, to, to ask Madison Cawthorn uh, why he won't stopping our, demo- attacking our democracy. Cause he's one of the guys who riled things up. And in fact, his name is oh, on yeah. that list of, of people who, you know, before January 6th was involved in, in possibly involved in the planning. Yeah, well, of course it was. Of course he was a part of that. He, is, he has been adamant about his willingness to attack democracy. Recently, he was at a, at a little bit of a rally or, or a, a semi-town hall, a meet and greet, and he said that depending on how things go in 2022 or 2024, he might be willing to take up arms against his fellow Americans. This is a sitting member of Congress saying that not only was he part of the, he was a part of the first insurrection, but he's got more insurrection planning in his head going forward, right? He was saying, eh, maybe the first one wasn't all that it was cut out to be. Maybe we, maybe we didn't get exactly, done, uh, exactly what we wanted. Yeah, done. we didn't get but to hang next, Mike Pence. But this next insurrection, boy, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be something. I'm, I'm already thinking. That's what Madison Cawthorn is telling the Republican Party. You know, you, you saw that Bill Mark, but maybe that was a, a couple weeks ago. And, and, and he was saying that right now Trump is putting in place the secretaries of state, the attorneys general, the governors, the the representatives all across the country, not just to boost his ego, but he's getting these radical people in positions of power, not just so they can appeal to the Trump voters, not so they can rile up the base, but in 2024, he wants those who did not help him execute on his plan 
to overthrow the election. Right. He wants them to actually be people who will say, yes, I am willing to turn my back on democracy. And that's what Madison Cawthorn is. He exists to help, uh, to help the MAGA movement go forward. He is not a person of any substance, any, any intellect on how to improve our country. He is simply a MAGA tool. And that's what all of these people are. And, and we have to treat them as such. They are not legitimate members of our government because they exist to attack our government. So we should only treat them as that. It's time for the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. 